Hey everybody, Bill in Alaska, back once again, uh, day 75, I believe, of my uh, carnivore journey. Um, if you guys remember last week, I told you I was feeling a little under the weather. I had a, I had a slight cough and runny nose. Um, I've been dealing with that all week. Uh, I haven't completely kicked it. It's actually been kind of a down, lazy week for me. Um, nothing severe, just kind of zero motivation. And I haven't started uh, several of the things that I wanted to start. But I just tr attribute it to the, uh, attribute my laziness <laughs> to uh, being slightly sick. That, you know, and I had forgot. I started to get a little bit of leg pain a couple of days ago. And that made me remember, I read in a couple comments, um, people had asked me, several people asked me, have I experienced oxalite dumping yet? And I didn't know what that was. So until I researched it, and I was like, ah, I'm kind of experiencing a few of those symptoms. Apparently oxalites are a type of acid that are found in like green leafy foods, uh, some nuts and seeds. And if you consume a lot of those and then you, for like long term, like I did, and uh, I still think those things have their place at, at some point, but well, that's another topic for another time. But um, apparently if you go cold turkey on those, like I did, uh, it can release uh, a lot of acid that's been stored in your system and it has some negative effects like uh, muscle cramps, like I've been getting a little bit in my legs, um, fatigue, which I've had this last week, and uh, irritability, which, you know, I don't get irritable too often, um, but it's been a little irritable this week a little bit. So I kind of fit the parameters of the uh, the symptoms of oxalate dumping. So whether it's that or uh, still not over my cold, well, who knows? Usually I don't get a cold very often. It's kind of rare, but when I do, it usually takes, you know, 10 days, two weeks, uh, you know, to shake the symptoms. <clears throat> so it's only been a little over a week, but we'll see. Um, anyway, still plugging along. Uh, like I said, it's been kind of a lazy week. Oh, <laughs> you know what I forgot to tell you guys? Uh, I got my first sponsorship. I finally landed, landed my first sponsorship. Um, with the help of Carrie, uh, uh, Element, L-M-N-T, the um, electrolyte supplement. Uh, I landed my first sponsorship with those guys. So I'm super excited. Uh, not this video, but this coming weekend, a week from now, I'll have my first um, Element electrolyte pitch uh, in my video. First official you know, commercial. So I'm really excited about that. And then uh, I'll do a little deeper dive into electrolytes and, and element in my next video. But yeah, super excited. Got my first sponsorship. A little nervous. A <laughs> little nervous. Yeah, so, you know, I want to do a really good job. So hopefully I can uh, continue sponsoring them because uh, I use element. Uh, I was taking two a day for a while, but that was a little too much. So I went down to one a day. Um. And sometimes I'll skip a day here and there because I'm so forgetful. Like, did I take my element today? Yeah. But, uh, well, anyway, that's, that's, that's super exciting. But besides that, not a whole lot more to report. Um, looking forward to the nurse coming back, my nurse Joy, my visiting home nurse. Uh, coming back next Friday, a um, little less than a week from now, and getting another, uh, getting another report and her bringing back her scale. Uh, we believe I lost about, uh, for those of you new to my channel, uh, a couple months ago, I was 700 pounds. And in the last uh, almost two and a half months, um, I lost just about 100 pounds. What well, we think. I know I lost a lot. Uh, but she brought her scale and there was a little bit of a debacle. But we believe we I lost about 100 pounds. And so when she comes back again, um, hopefully we'll get that straightened out. But, but I've lost a lot co compared to what I was, you know, uh, 10 weeks ago. It's been quite a huge difference. But anyway, um, so today I just want to give you guys a quick update. Uh, oh, and a big shout out. I got an, a big shout out for another incredible gift I got in the mail from one of you. Just wonderful, lovely uh, people from the carnivore community. Um. So we're going to do that. I'm going to cook a couple of chuck roasts 
Uh, I'm cooking from bed today. I've been cooking from my desk. But like I said, I'm just kind of, <laughs> kind of lazy. So I'm going to cook from bed today. But uh, I'm going to get right back on the desk. Don't worry. Um, so I'm going to cook a couple chuck roasts. I'm going to cook one normal in a medium rare. And then I'm going to use the other one to cut up into my crispy bits that I, I told you guys about for my snack. For when I get the cravings, those uh, crispy bits, you know, they save my life. So uh, I'm going to show you guys that right now. All right, we got a couple uh, on the smaller side, chuck roasts here. I definitely like mine a little bit bigger and definitely a little more higher fat to protein ratio. These are kind of lean, but I noticed in this half cow that I got, uh, some of the cuts are really well marbled and a lot more fat. and Some of them, <clears throat> some of them are a little more lean. I hit it with a little Redmond uh, smoked cherry salt, which is quite delicious. Anyway, beggars can't be choosers. We'll uh, we'll throw this in the air fryer, and they should still turn out pretty darn delicious. Some speculation: there was a big celebrity that had committed suicide around that time. And, and gorgeous as usual. Um, I tell you, these Ninja air fryers—they uh, they never fail to impress. Hey, who's that out here? So Looks like a shady character to me. <laughs> Best guy in the world, right there. All right, they've been resting for about six, seven minutes. I think I'm gonna eat this one and cut this one up for my uh, for my snacks, my crispy bits. So let's see how we did. All right. Looking absolutely delicious as usual. We'll give her what I call the old carry shake. <laughs> I love when he cooks his steaks and then he just completely drenches his board in the meat and his uh his salt. Yeah, let's uh let's see what's going on here. Just simply amazing as usual. I tell you this uh this level of delicious eating it just never gets old. All right, I got that other chuck cut up into uh almost like the size of french fries. Little uh, carnivore meat french fries. <laughs> then I'm going to uh cook up really really crisp for my uh for my snack when I get the cravings. I got these in a little baggie. And uh, when I get those old familiar carb or sweets or any kind of hunger cravings at all, I just eat a couple of these crispy bad boys and uh, I'm good to go. So let's get these cooked up. Let's take a little look, see how we're doing. Oh, well, they're getting there. A couple more minutes. I like them to be really thoroughly uh, dark and caramelized. And then you get that once they cool off you really get that nice crunch that really makes you feel like you're uh you're having a nice snack you know for, <clears throat> for those of us who have spent years and years you know crunching far too much on potato chips and whatever else you know that goes crunch in the night <laughs> uh, but these are just these are just an incredible snack a couple more minutes we'll see what they look like thinking it should be about ready oh yeah that's uh that's the color we're looking for right there thoroughly caramelized remember we're intentionally uh overcooking these to the point of complete caramelization so uh they're kind of dry and crispy which is what we're looking for or uh to satisfy when we get those cravings and we'll let them cool off and uh, put them in a Ziploc. All right, and there's my crispy bits. I usually make a lot bigger batch than this, but that uh, that truck roast is way smaller, almost like by half than uh, what they normally are. 
but and just cut them up into like little french fry size pieces and they are they are uh, they're really good i mean you may want yours cooked a little less than this or you may want them cooked a little more you know just experiment and uh, see what you like the best but for those of you that are struggling with uh you know i have so many comments of people saying you know i can only go like a week or more then i give in to my cravings try making a batch of these just take a, and you, the beauty of this is that you can use a really cheap cut of meat. I mean, I've used T-bones and stuff before, you know, and they're, it makes really good crispy bits, but so does a really cheap cut of meat too. A chuck roast is just fine. Or you can use flank steak or, uh, you can use anything, any kind of beef whatsoever, but the cheap cuts work really well for making these snacks. And um, when you're feeling the craving, just eat a couple of these and you'll find, I think you'll find, for the majority of you, it will really help. It really will help. And then just pop them in a Ziploc bag and keep them with you, even in the car. If you're having a craving and that pull to uh, pull into McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's, <laughs> just uh, pull out your bagging in your glove box and eat a couple of these. And uh, it, it could save the day. For all you preppers out there, I wanted to uh, share with you a little video I sent Carrie, because uh, Carrie is a fellow prepper. Um, and so I just wanted to show off a little bit. So I sent him a, a quick video of something I got in the mail. Uh, it's a suture kit, a medical kit for uh, practicing uh, sutures. That's when you're uh, sewing up stitches. That's I think is a really important skill to have uh, for in the long-term bad situation. But I got a practice kit, so here's that little uh, video that I sent Carrie. Welcome to next level prepping, my friend. This is uh, this is professional level prepping. <laughs> I just got this in the mail today. This is my uh, suture practicing kit. Uh, I got uh, all my equipment right here, forceps, and everything you need to uh, for suturing, sewing up wounds. Got the uh, actual sutures. With a needle and a filament and then the practice pad that simulates flesh it's super cool same thickness as human skin and the flesh underneath you just uh, take your scalpel your razor blades and you slice this open and then you take the rest of your stuff and then uh, practice your stitches There's so many different kinds of uh, st uh, medical stitches to learn yeah i did this years ago but it's been about five or six years so i'm just brushing up for long term, uh, in case something bad happens, crap hits the fan situation, and someone gets a really bad wound, and there's no hospitals or doctors, you can uh, sew people up yourself. I think it's a very important skill to have. So yeah, anyway, uh, in my next video, I'll actually, uh, when I'm back at my desk again, hopefully feeling better, fingers crossed, next week, uh, I'll be at my desk and I'll show you guys some footage of me actually using that, uh, cutting that simulated flesh open and then suturing it up. You know, there's so many different kinds of stitches you can learn for so many different uh, wounds and situations. The amount of information on YouTube about learning how to do stuff like that is incredible. If you guys research it, uh, it's just step by step, you know, for, you know, for beginners all the way to advanced. It's almost like you don't need medical school. There's so much medical information, you know, how to, how to do this, how, how to set a broken bone, how to suture, uh, so many things if you research it. Um, I think it's, I, I spend a lot of time downloading stuff like that onto my iPad, so I have it in, in a long-term situation, step-by-step -step guide to know what to do. <clears throat> but anyway, I think I'm going to wrap this one up. Um, Anyway, I think I'm going to uh, wrap this one up. Um, it's been a little bit of a down week again, but uh, I, I can feel myself coming out the other side of it. So excited for the next, really excited for the next video because, like I said, it's my uh, my very first sponsorship with Element. So I'm going to have my first commercial on that one. So excited and nervous for that one. I, uh, I hope it works out. I'm sure it will. Element is a great product. <clears throat> but um you guys just stay strong make your crispy bits um keep at it 
if you do, I promise the benefits are just going to be, uh, it's going to, it's so going to be so, so worth it. Um, as always, I love you guys. Stay strong. Keep the faith. Ask for help from above. Be kind to one another. Forgive each other. And uh, prepare, 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 and repent. Can't say that enough. I mean, look what's going on in the world. Every day is something new escalating. What's happening now, just in the last couple of days, and, and all, the headlines all over the news, when, and I know you guys know what I'm talking about, The uh, what's going on in the Middle East. And I got to be real careful. You know, YouTube algorithms now, it's... You got to be careful what you say or you'll be, you know, demonetized. So you got to be careful. But what's going on, it's uh, it's at the level, like a, a prophetic level event. It's it's a big deal. So I was going to be watching this closely and see how it plays out. But prepare, prepare. Just, just prepare for it at whatever speed that uh, your finances and uh, energy level allow you to do. The preparing that you do now, spiritually, temporally, Food, water, medical, all the preparing that you do now is going to really, really pay benefits in the future. I promise you. So, um, I love you guys. Prepare. Forgive each other. Love each other. Be kind to one another. And I'll see you guys uh, in a few days on the next one. Well, good morning. Good morning. Did you have a good sleep? Huh? Did you have a good sleep? Yeah, you have a good sleep? You ready to have a good day? Are you ready to have a good day today? Yeah. Should be a pretty good day. It should be pretty good.